Hello and good morning. There is no doubt about the political temperature in the country, which is rising, and the radar is now on the IGP and the National Security Minister. Gradually, we are getting closer to December 7, which is now only 13 days away. The EU Observer Mission, which has deployed across the country, is engaging key stakeholders, including the media, to have a fair and independent view on matters. Welcome to the morning update powered by Wazor TV. We are live from the Arkayet Hotel here in Bolgatanga. Today, we shall share the issues on the way people in the region, Upper East, are receiving uh, John Mahama, who is on a campaign tour, and topics he has raised. And we will take a commercial break at this time and listen to messages from our sponsors, X Natural Mineral Water. When I come back, I will introduce our guest. The average human body mass should have at least 60% water for optimal performance in any physical or mental exercise. We can help you maintain it naturally. X Natural Mineral Water. Simply natural. Assemblymen does a lot of work in the community. They are the first point of contact to the community. There's no one that will come to the community and you cannot see the assemblyman first. Then after that, that may be, they'll be talking of the MP or they'll go to the MC or something. So we are the first point of contact. At the place that I'm an assemblyman, people come to me with their problems and then some of them come with their needs and they would like to meet the MP or anybody for help and things. People are fall sick, people uh, need school fees. They will come to assemblyman and all these things. But so far as we are not being paid, the people come, we turn them down. Your own little way, especially if somebody is sick, or if they call you that somebody has died and is somewhere, or somebody is sick and is in an uncompleted building or a chaos Islam area, you need to go and attend to that person. But at a point you go there, maybe the person need financial support. And so far as we are not being paid, sometimes it becomes more difficult for us. So I've seen it wise that all assemblymen, we are the first point of contact. So I believe that if JDM said he'll pay assemblymen, it's a plus to us. And we all, assemblymen who believe that, yes, assembly is really assembly, I'm sure that all assemblymen will vote for JDM. I think uh, the policies that has been churned out by His Excellency, the former president, Napobo Kole, now John Damani Mahama, is so exciting and interesting. And I am so much enthused and, and happy about those promises. And more especially, the one he promised assembly members. If you look at uh, the way poverty is arrogantly facing us in the face, it is so nauseating and irritating. For, for, uh, and as a result of that, His Excellency John Ramani Mahama is promising assembly members uh, monthly salaries that will enable them to be able to take care of their families, their needs, and, and put them in a platform, uh, I mean, to, 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 to take responsibility and to take the bull by the horn and make sure that, I mean, the problems that, that is being faced by the people in their communities are being sent to the assembly to be addressed. So I am so much excited by, the, by these policies. And I want to thank His Excellency, I mean, uh, the incoming president, His Napoba Kule, Na John Damani Mahama. I am proud to associate myself with the policies of His Excellency John Damani Mahama. And I want to urge all, everybody, women, the youth, the aged, and everybody to come on board and, I mean, uh, solidly behind His Excellency John Damani Mahama and vote for him overwhelmingly. Thank you for staying with us. I am Erika Hianyo, and this is the morning update. We are live from Akayet Hotel in the Upper East Regional Capital, Bogatanga. The Electoral Commission is in the news again, raising more questions and suspicions. Imani Africa accuses EC of PR stunt 
to cover up issues of transparency. I want to quote what Imani Africa is saying. Far from being reassuring, such conduct reveals the EC to be impulsive, focused on bling over substance and given to distraction and diversionary tactics, even as real issues of accountability continue to be ignored by this highly non-transparent organization. Is Imani blunt? That's the question I'm putting to you. Is this a warning signal? Now, the Minister of State at the Interior Ministry, Brian Achampon says, adequate security measures will be provided on December 7 to assure that every voter is protected to vote peacefully. He told NPP supporters at Nkoko during a two-day campaign tour by the president, Nana Kufado, over the weekend that the Interior Ministry has the men to stop acts of intimidation and snatching of ballot boxes. Brian Achampon is remembered for his neck-deep involvement in the Iowa West war gone by election violence. What is your take on his assurances? Now, the former National Security Coordinator, Lieutenant Colonel Larry Bevlo Lati, who is now NDC's Director of Operations ahead of the December 7 elections, has spoken. In a statement, IGP's directive on prescribed uniforms for personnel is not enough guarantee. Lieutenant Colonel Bevrolati says the NDC takes seriously information about possible deployment of fake security operatives and makes reference to the Yawaso incident and insists on wearing of name tax our identification as the surest way to safeguard the integrity and image of the Ghana Police Service and other security agencies that will be deployed for the election day security activities. Now there's another controversy. President Nana Kufado courts Ebri girls to support, the, uh, to support his government on campaign trail. This is one of the headlines on Ghana Web. Now the story talks about him addressing a mammoth gathering at Ebri girls senior high school and students from schools in the Kriapim South constituency enclave were buzzed to the venue. This is in sharp contrast to how government handled the Joshua Kamba. Remember, Joshua Kamba is the national organizer of the NDC at the Timpani Secondary School saga. NDC's candidate, John Mahama, has reacted. This morning, my guest is a former deputy attorney general, a member of NDC's legal team, and MP for Borgatanga East, Dr. Dominic Ayene. He's going to join us for the conversation of many of these issues I've raised. Doc, uh, you are welcome. Thank you very much, and thank you for having I, me. I see you relaxed, as if uh, the 13 days is not putting pressure on you. I am under enormous pressure. You can uh, understand why, you know, um, I would be relaxed today, because the visit of the former president has shown uh, that we are on the, on the path to victory. Um, you, I'm sure you were at, in my constituency. You saw the massive crowd. You saw the outpouring of love and affection for GM and the NDC. And I think that that assured me that we are on the path to victory. So I'm a bit relaxed this morning. I'm sure you are following Waze or TV, which is powering most of the updates on the former president's uh, tour across the country. And we are grateful to uh, the technical team behind what they do. You have seen him go around many of the constituencies in Upper East for day one and day two. That yeah. was yesterday. Yeah. How is your own assessment of how the people are responding and as we have a, this conversation i'm sure uh, we'll have a feel of yesterday's round and how the people received him the visuals will be playing on the screen but um, for you as a candidate and somebody who has seen politics in upper east over the years yes. what is your response no my response is that um, the ndc is going to up its performance in this constituency over and above i mean in in this region over and above the performance in 2016. Um, I'm sure if you look at the statistics in 2016, John Mahama won this region by over 60% of the vote. And I believe that the disappointing performance of the new patriotic party uh, led by Nana Dodankwa Kufado um, uh, has uh, led to a situation where even their own people, people who are registered members of the MPP, are disappointed in them. And I believe that uh, come December 7th, we are probably looking at an average regional performance pushing close to 70% or over 70% of the vote. For, in favor of the in NDC. Favor of, in favor now, of the NDC. What about turnout? Because uh, we've done a new registration exercise. And then if you look at the previous elections, right. the total number of voters was just around 420,000 thereabouts. If you look at how much 
uh, President Nana Kufuadu uh, got as in 2016, 16. and what uh, uh, jo former John President John Mahama got. got in terms of votes. If you put the two together, regardless of the spoiled ballots and those who may not have turned up, you are looking around 420,000. Yes. If you compare that to the turnout for the registration exercise now, are you looking at huge numbers? Yes, we are looking at I mean, huge numbers because um, both parties have been very actively uh, involved uh, I mean, in the registration process. And I believe on our part, uh, we need to whip up the enthusiasm for people to come out on December 7th. And then also, most of the time, is because um, in the rural areas, it's very difficult for people to get to polling stations. Happily, a number of new polling stations have been created that have taken the vote closer to, I mean, a, a lot of the communities. And then also, uh, when you have aged people who cannot walk to the polling booths, you have to provide means of transport. And so that has to be done, you know, by the NDC. For us, we are preparing to provide a means of transport for persons who would not be able to get to the polling booth by walking because of distance. My guest this morning is Dominic Ayene. He's the MP for Borgatanga East. He's also a former Deputy Attorney General. We are looking at former President NDC's uh, 2020 candidates tour of the Upper East region. And then we shall off obviously look at other national issues. Upper East is predominantly a farming area. Yesterday, I virtually tasted the deprivation of basic social interventions. And I'm sure as we have the conversation, you see that the, in this particular region, access to electricity, good roads, housing, etc. We moved through yeah. Zebila, Binduri, Garu, Tempani, Boku, Nabdam yeah. yesterday. Doc, is it an issue of neglect by governments over the years from where you sit or there has been a trend, but it has not been sustained. Well, the poverty levels are reducing, but they are not reducing at a rate that will make uh, life, uh, you know, um, livable uh, for the for I mean, uh, most people in the in the region. If you take you take for instance uh, the statistics, okay, uh, Bursa South is the poorest district in the region. Uh, with a poverty level of about 87%. And uh, while you continue the conversation, I just want our uh, viewers to see that we are showing you a video of one of the stretch of roads that we plied. And as we have okay. this conversation, they are just having a certain understanding of uh, poverty, which is implied in the kind of roads and the bushes around the poor households and so on. But continue well, your conversation. Okay, sir. so, so you have, you have uh, poverty levels very high, very endemic in areas like Bursa South. If you take Boku West, uh, the Puzga area, uh, the poverty levels are hovering around 6 or 7 percent. All right. Now, I think that uh, if you look at, at the colonial history, okay, uh, the northern part of Ghana was, you know, the labor reserve. Okay. And so the, the colonial reserve, I mean, the colonial government basically extracted labor from the, from the, the northern part of Ghana but neglected the development of the, 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 the North. Now, if you take education as a social intervention, which is a driver for moving from uh, you know, poverty or the low class to the middle class and so on, all right, education didn't come to the North until very late uh, in, the, in the administration of the colonial regime. In fact, it was even a crime at some point in time for you to go from the North to the South to get an education. All right. And so, because of that neglect, when Nkrumah, uh, when we won independence, Nkrumah tried to do some affirmative action of sorts for the North. And that is how come he implemented a free, you know, I mean, a, a education for the northern sector of the, of, the, of the country. Now, that has helped a little bit in creating a middle class, you know, for the North. But that middle class is not large enough in order to be able to, I mean, uh, uh, drive down the rate of poverty in the, in the area. We cannot say, for instance, that um, the NDC government, you know, various NDC governments have been instrumental, okay, in reducing poverty in the north. So, for when, instance... When you say that, yes, that's yes, what you were... Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, because you see, for instance, if you take, um, take the case of electricity, which you mentioned earlier, all right, when I was in secondary school in the 1980s, okay, we did not have electricity in most parts of the north. In fact, we had electricity only in the regional capitals. So there was a huge generating plant here at the ECG, I mean, uh, premises in Bolgatanga, supplying electricity only to Bolgatanga. It was the NDC and the President Rawlings 
that first extended the national grid to the northern part of the country. And then we did, we, we implemented the rural electrification, uh, electrification program. And that is how come that you go to remote parts of the, of the north, of the upper east region, and you find that at least houses have bulbs and they can light up, I mean, in the night and then uh, be able to see their way around. Okay, so when it comes to the, I mean, uh, the uh, reduction of poverty, the development of the area, the NDC has been much more committed, you know, to, I mean, uh, uh, developing the north than the MPP. Is this something that people subscribe to? Oh, it is certainly, that, that is it. You see, for instance, uh, you, you witnessed a ceremony in my constituency where um, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama was crowned uh, Naba Maltenga. Okay, Naba Maltenga means uh, the development chief. Okay, and it wasn't for nothing. If you take my constituency, for instance, every chief's compound, okay, every hospital, every, I mean, a school that you can think of, in my constituency has been built by the, the this in the, the NDC okay you if you go around you can't point to any concrete you know a form of social intervention uh, by way of infrastructure for instance social infrastructure like educational facilities health facilities that have been put up by the I mean new patriotic party so um, by and large the people have subscribed to the view that when the NDC is in power their lives improve and, you know, they even, some of the women have translated this into song, okay? Uh, most of the songs that we play at our campaigns, they talk about even baskets, okay? When they weave their baskets. When the MPP is in power, the price of baskets get depressed, okay? When the end, I mean, and then even the smokes. When the end, MPP is in power, the price of the, the smoke becomes, uh, you know, I mean... Uh, uh, the cheapest commodity. Yeah, it, it becomes not fashionable. When the NDC is in power... If you say not fashionable, it looks a okay. bit weird. In a, no, ba basically the, the point I make, maybe that is the there wrong is no expression. Money in the system. Not that there is no money in the system. Okay. Um, the commodity becomes less attractive for some weird reason. I don't know whether it is as a result of market forces or so, but it becomes less attractive. So baskets and smokes, you know, don't do very well when the MPP is in power. Usually when the, M the NDC is in power, then the price of uh, baskets, you know, go up. So I think somebody should conduct some kind of uh, socio-economic study. But from, from the little I know, yes. the, you talked about market forces. Either people are buying because there's money, and so that is driving the prices up, or people are not buying. It's like um, maybe tomato yeah, glut, yes. or maybe uh, the glut of any of the farm produce. It, the it, it is possible that, are, I mean, uh, in, in, uh, during the periods that they are in power, okay, demand becomes, you know, I mean, uh, less. Uh, less than when the, ND, the NDC is okay. in power. So now let's move on to other issues. Now, one thing NDC wishes for is convincing Win to avoid legal battles at the Supreme Court following recent developments. Now, the, EC is, uh, the EC's competence, integrity, has again been battered. Imani Africa has been uncharitable following the so-called leaked voters list and EC's claim of innocence. And now, early this month, NDC flagged alleged overprinting of ballot papers. Now, two days ago, ballot papers with duplicate serial numbers have been detected in Koforidia. Again, the EC has created additional 700 polling stations in the eastern region, and Michaela Champon, Deputy Regional Director of the EC, explains that the increment is a result of the Commission's decision to split over subscribed polling stations that, have voter, that had a voter population of above 800. Note, this is the stronghold of the NDC, and Dr. Ayinene has also stated that it seems that this has been um, replicated across the country. The country now, yeah. for you as one of NDC's lawyers, and looking at um, the suspicion, even at this stage, with 13 days to the elections, that a, a, a think tank like Imani Africa is yeah. still raising doubt. What is NDC's positioning going into the elections to avoid any controversy that may plunge this country into chaos? Well, I think if there's any lesson that we learned from the election petition uh, litigation in the Supreme Court in 2016, it is that the elections are won at the polling station. So it is the level of preparedness of the party at the polling station that will ensure victory come December 7th, 20, I mean, uh, 20, uh, 2020. Okay, and uh, as far as the NDC is concerned, we have taken this lesson really very seriously. So we, we are training our polling agents Okay, we are ensuring that, uh, you know, the, um, the polling agents, you know, have access to the necessary information for them to be able to, 
uh, you know, serve as effectively as our agents in monitoring the polls, okay, in order to ensure that, uh, you know, there is no uh, uh, untoward conduct on the part of electoral officers, you know, who may or may not have some partisan, you know, agenda up their sleeves. Okay, so for instance, uh, it used to be the case in rural areas, okay, that we generally allowed anybody who was, a, I mean, a, a party activist to serve as, um, an agent. you know, an agent, whether or not they were really very well educated to be able to know whether someone is writing 1,056 or 1,560, okay, because those things mean a lot in terms of the, I mean, the, the, the total tally of votes that a candidate gets. But now we are busy recruiting accountants, teachers, you know, professionals to be at the polling station. The uh, party activists at the branch level who, are, who know the population and who know the people who are entitled to vote and so on are going to be there. They will watch the polls, you know, on our behalf. So we are, we are, we are really prepared, you know, now for one, the, one other the issue you know, elections. that keeps coming up, and I get a lot of text messages because uh, of the conversations we drive on TV XYZ, Wazor TV for uh, those who follow us on Facebook and YouTube, yeah. is the possibility of intimidation. This is typically one of the deprived regions in Ghana. Most of the areas are hard to reach or difficult that is so. uh, roads to uh, maybe travel. Uh, travel. Now, what uh, strategies are you putting in place, especially when even your own director of operations is demanding that beyond the prescribed uniforms, there should be name tags and then the NDC's uh, readiness to ensure that you police the polls? The suspicion that I, I derive from the text messages yeah. is that uh, there's a the possibility of uh, fake security personnel right. uh, being deployed to suppress votes, to intimidate people, or to delay processes at polling stations. Yeah, I, 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 I thank you very much. I read the IGP's uh, press release. Interestingly, it was signed by a former uh, associate of my law office. Okay. Uh, who is now a police uh, officer and I think she's in charge of legal. And uh, I was surprised that uh, they, they had various forms, uniforms, that they said were the prescribed, I mean, a uniform for the police. That is well and, well, I mean, uh, well, well and good. The police, I mean, administration is entitled to prescribe, you know, uniform for the, the I mean, uh, for the personnel of the police. However, in the interest of national security and Transparency and accountability, all right, name tax, okay, have been conventionally, you know, required of the pol of, I mean, uh, uh, police, police uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, personnel. And therefore, for, I mean, uh, uh, for them to, um, you know, have uniforms that, for instance, in the rural areas, okay, people associate the police uniform with a particular way of, uh, you know, dressing. So once they see somebody dressed otherwise than what, they, I mean, they are used to, it is possible that they may not know that this person is, um, you know, I mean, a, a regular police person who is supposed to keep security. And if they do not know, they will not be in a position to report any untoward behavior that is taking place at a polling station. So I think uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Bevelo Latte, you know, has done the right thing for, by insisting that they should have the name tags, they should have their ID numbers for purposes of identification and then for purposes of reportage of you know, um, you know, untoward conduct on the part of any security now, personnel. The, the, the and, and I wanted to just underscore one point. If you take the Ayawasu West Wagon, you know, saga, okay, most of the people who came wearing T-shirts without name tags could not, have, could not be identified. In fact, uh, Honorable Sam George, Sam uh, Jata George did a fantastic job of ident identifying a, a hoodlum like Azugu, you know, whom he, I mean, he had met personally prior to the, the incident. Otherwise, the country would have been at a loss as to who actually perpetrated those acts of violence in Ayawa West. So we don't want a repeat of Ayawa West in any polling station in this country. Now, Larry, Bevrulate is uh, one of the security couples Ghanaians respect because right. of his background. Yes. And then he has also raised concerns, drawing the IGP's attention to rumors about the printing of fake uh, police uniforms uh, to be used on that day. Okay. And... Uh, this comes at a time when Brian Achampon, who many Ghanaians will uh, never forget uh, for his role uh, and his own confession about involvement in the Ayawasu West Wagon by elections. Yeah. At this stage, should 
somebody like Brian Achampon, a minister of state at the Ministry of um, Interior, be speaking to issues about they deploying people to ensure the prevention of uh, snatching of ballot boxes and so on? Does it cast any suspicion in the eyes of the NDC with somebody as huge as one of the top legal brains behind the NDC as a party? Well, I, I think that uh, it is highly unfortunate that uh, Honorable Brian Achampon is still involved in matters relating to election security. Okay, uh, the Honorable Ambrus Derry is the Minister of Interior. I think that the police administration as a professional body should be the ones handling these matters directly. Um, the involvement of Brian Achampong, if this government is committed, you know, to the principles of the constitution we, in, in, in terms of the fairness and transparency of the election, um, they should not, I mean, let Brian Achampong be ne anywhere near the organization of the security apparatus for this election because of what he has done. In fact, in any decent democracy, okay, Brian Achampong should have either resigned or been fired by the president. Okay, so for him to be the one now, I mean, is still deeply involved in, in matters of election security is very worrying. But I think that the best thing, you know, that we can do uh, as a, I mean, a party, for instance, uh, the issue about the fake uniforms being printed. Okay, yes, we picked up the intelligence. Yes, we, we should be able, I mean, a person like uh, Larry Bevlo Latte, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, should be able, you know, I mean, uh, to um, gather uh, I mean, a sufficient intelligence for us to be prepared to counter what they are, they are, they are going to do on election day. Okay, so we'll be uh, taking a short break shortly, but um, I want us to delve uh, uh, briefly into other trending issues. I want us to focus on the campaign. Really well. And I want you to think about what is really sinking in the minds of the people in this part of the country, Upper East. And then what really should drive the message by your party and other Ghanaians who are interested as we move along. This is the morning update. It's powered by Wazo TV. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube. We are at the Akayet Hotel here in Bogatanga, one of the best facilities. In fact, I've had the opportunity to sleep in one of the rooms and I just want to invite you to come here and you have the best of uh, the, the comforts that you have ever imagined to enjoy uh, in your lifetime. We'll be back after this break. The average human body mass should have at least 60% water for optimal performance in any physical or mental exercise. We can help you maintain it naturally. X Natural Mineral Water. Simply natural. No, to me, Jamaco Finance for no more years, you must have a boy young, I hear transport. I say, yeah, Binumono, Nagaya Macro Finance, Nagaya Binum, and Beduba, you do name. I've seen him, a Nyama, a Juma, Macro Finance, Amadi Boyen. I've seen more loss, you get to get in Amadi Maya, and I'm a boy, my yes, so you have to be a debat. I buy where I was so bad, or Begunina since twenty seventeen. I bet do twenty twenty week. Open come two thousand Ghana cities. I will bank grandpa unyan loan. But Obia noa or start a juma for loan yet juma. As a mago balance, no, and my boys and my yes could be brina yet juma. Since I buy omuchini nano, I mago balance for no, on a gum, but on my mago balance in the bar. Omen was a yes to a juma venue bia. A GM or so a bar. No baba betria momudia. Mida me, Mindy, me with this obetria. Because why be that? We would do so betria, and to so banal so betria, and to you and I am one, especially with a bank in a good area. Banking, sign bank to get in and knock up with your wound. Because banking to get in, you know, you're good. 
Enti me dia so baba no basa be hye ni nyina mu kina no bia nya dwuma ye. Bia nya dwuma ye dia. Ami me support se ye nto abanfa mane na omra na omato nya dwuma so. Hwe banks do do wagu no. Se nipa ba ko me di kwasi dum dia kra ye faton. Hwe kwasi dum ni bank pa e wo ho. Na se nuwa ba ko sia. Eh eh labadi ba bank ba ko si wo. Na se even bank ba ko bia fa nipa tan including eh wo ho eh eh cleaners kra fa nipa tan a. Cleaners, you know, bank manager, be a can one. Now she across the nation. She bank a work good. She nipa do work. Mama tenefi. Welcome back. This is uh, TV X Y Z. This is Waze or TV, and you are watching us on Facebook and YouTube. And this is the morning update. We are at Akayet Hotel here in the Upper East Regional Capital, Borgatanga. The conversation is with Dr. Dominic Ayeni, MP for Borgatanga East. We have always known him because he's been very active in the media space. The conversation is about NDC's preparedness towards the 2020 elections and then the candidate, John Dramani Mohamed's campaign tour of the Eastern region. Now, MPP's key campaign message is free SHS. The president, Nana Kufuado, has taken his campaign to secondary schools. Students were buzzed to Ebri Girls Senior High School where he addressed them. President Mahama has reacted to this. Listen. is a very vicious government. I've spoken to several journalists. As soon as they do a program criticizing the government, they get threatening phone calls. This was not the case when NDC was in government. And so we need to get this government out. And there's somebody who has suffered exactly what I'm talking about. And that is the former headmaster of Timpani Second Senior High School. Our national organizer went to his school and spoke to the children. And a video was done of him speaking to the children. The children were talking about the challenges they were facing in school. And when that video came out, they decided to victimize the headmaster. And so he's been victimized, but he's still proud. He's still happy. And we are all proud of him that he stood his ground. Most other people have become quiet. There are many headmasters who want to talk because of the problems but when you talk they will sack you or they will suspend you or they'll transfer you this is not the country that we envisaged when we passed the 1992 constitution nana kufado prides himself as a human rights lawyer but he's become a democratic dictator last night now there are key issues here we all followed joshua kamba the ndc's national organizers visit to that school uh, how uh, the video went viral, his invitation by the police, the suspension of the headmaster, the statements issued by the Ghana Education Service and so on. Now, for you as a member of parliament and a lawyer, how does these uh, issues about double standards and so on, and in this case, the president was at a secondary school, students were buzzed from various institutions to that school. Yeah. How do you compare uh, these developments? Well, I mean, uh, to start with, Okay, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with having a political meeting in a secondary school. I do remember distinctly uh, during the days of the PNDC, during the days of the revolution, we had revolutionaries, uh, young men like uh, Charles Sabori, then coming to Notre Dame to talk to us about the tenets and principles of the revolution. Uh, we had people like uh, Dr. Uh, Atampuri, you know, uh, Dr. I mean, uh, Atim and co coming to talk to us about the principles of the revolution. It's part of the political, you know, they're the bringing the, the, the holistic education of young people, all right? And uh, uh, there are young people in secondary schools who are of 18 years and are constitutionally entitled to vote. So there's nothing fundamentally wrong with a political party, you know, canvassing for votes uh, in, a, in, a, in a, uh, a civil manner okay, in a secondary school. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with that. So, in fact, I was uh, taken aback by the reaction of the MPP government when Akamba went, you know, to this secondary school uh, to talk to the children about, uh, you know, what, I mean, uh, the, the conditions under which they were being educated. And uh, uh, the, for the same government to turn around and the president, who is the leader of the party, to turn around and then uh, go to a secondary school and canvass for votes, on the back of, you know, his implementation of a botched free senior high school program. 
um, is the, the highest I mean, a, a level of uh, double standards that a politician can, I mean, a, can display. Okay, and I think that the, the, I mean, His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama is, you know, right on point with respect to why, you know, headmasters should, I mean, uh, uphold their own integrity, uh, stand up and speak up for, you know, the, the I mean, uh, uh, against uh, the dictator dictatorship, you know, by the Minister of Education and the Ghana Education Service. Because there is nothing, as I said, wrong with, you know, having, I mean, uh, going to a secondary school to talk to the students about politics. Nothing absolutely wrong with it. And uh, the former president actually uh, referenced what he described as the culture of silence that is among uh, school heads uh, because of the intimidation, threats of transfers yeah. here and there. Now, for you and, as and, and you see, that is a threat to academic freedom. Okay? Because if you have a situation where headmasters cannot speak up, you know, they can't speak their, their minds, uh, they cannot, you know, for instance, are they now saying that if a headmaster at an assembly, okay, uh, you know, speaks about government policy, let's say the free senior high school, and, and the reason why the quality of education is, uh, you know, reducing rapidly in this country. I just saw today on, uh, and, uh, there was a news item yesterday on BBC, okay, and there's a global ranking of, I mean, uh, uh, schools. I don't know whether it is fake news. Uh, because I didn't watch it on the BBC channel, but I saw it on, uh, on WhatsApp. Okay, there was a screenshot of Singapore being the number one, okay, uh, in terms of the global rankings of uh, quality of education. And Ghana is, uh, is uh, at the bottom. This is not what we want for our children, okay? And so, for me, it is important that uh, the freedom of headmasters to run their schools uh, in the best way possible, um, you know, should be, uh, should be I mean, uh, guaranteed by the Ghana Education Service. In fact, that freedom is even guaranteed by the Constitution of the Republic now, now, of Ghana. Now, let us talk in um, this controversy. The president obviously has opened the floodgates. We have two weeks to the elections. Will the NDC attempt to visit any of the secondary schools in your enclaves to see how school heads will react? Well, or I, you, I was... Just I, I, leave the to, public to be honest, to, to be honest to do, with you... To draw their own conclusions. To be honest with you, Eric, I was surprised <laughs> that the MPP reacted the way they did. Because in 2012... When I came, you know, to campaign, I went and campaigned in the Zorungu Secondary School, okay, which was then in a very dilapidated, I mean, estate. I, 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 you know, had the students, you know, in the assembly hall, and I told them what I was coming to do, and it being the, the only secondary school in my constituency, what I, was, I could do for them in order to improve the quality of, ed, ed, I mean, education in the, in the school, okay. I saw nothing absolutely wrong with it. So for us, you know, if the students were on campus, we would go to them and take the message of John Dramani Mahama and the M NDC to the students. Okay, so Dr. Uh, Dominic Ayenini is the MP for Bogatanga East. Many of us know him already, so I don't need to say much about his background. Now, political parties say each vote counts. How ordinary people react is key. And I have noticed an unusual trend. The youth... And I've spoken to some of them who defied the bad, dusty roads yesterday, for example, to follow John Mahama. Hear them speak now. John Mahama, I say, who say what we see? Who they fuck out? Who they find food from the dentia? Okay, the only thing I hear, I hear from John Mahama, I say, in the town of John Mahama, what are you? I just want to hear you. I just want to hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn them up, turn up. Yeah, I'm bringing you to. Okay. There's a love we have for GM. Mm -hmm. And what he did for Ghana as a former president. We, we already, we, to the he camera. has done a lot for Ghana. And we know his, his second camera will be marvelous. So that's, that's the love we have for But it looks like you are spending your own money, you are yeah, buying your own I fuel. I spend my own money to fuel the stand from Boko up to this place. That's the love we have for here. And you are soaking the dust. And that's it. As you can see me, that's the day with this dusty road. And I believe that if game was to be in power, we wouldn't have been passing through this road. And we are praying that inshallah, December 7th, JM will be back to power. Yeah.
you You've seen it all. What actually attracted me was uh, how they appeared. I was comfortable uh, in a vehicle that has been pr provided for me, so perhaps uh, I could sit uh, and then see the driver chauffeur as, let me use it advisedly, to the venues. But these are young men, and you could taste the, the commitment towards helping to support a political party win an election. Now, when you see such young people, some of them may be very old, uh, following you, giving you all the support, regardless of their circumstances, but what they believe in, what message does it send to you as a politician or well, to NDC um, as a political party? Um, sometimes, Eric, it's frightening. And it is frightening because I see, you know, teeming numbers of young people, uh, you know, uh, following our party. And they are doing so out of the hope, out of the hope and the aspiration that the NDC will salvage them from the situation in which they find themselves. Um, you will note that the youth constitute about 57% of the population of this country. In fact, 57% of the, the population of this country is under the age of 25. Okay, youth unemployment is a, 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 I mean a, a time bomb. It's ticking and can explode at any point in time. All right, Counts, I mean uh, countries that are, I mean have experienced civil strife and unrest, you know, have gone down that road because. Uh, you know, some political actors have exploited youth unemployment in order to cause civil strife. Because if a young person is hanging around without a job, without any hope, and somebody promises them that, look, if they uh, t take up, I mean, uh, arms, and then, uh, you know, are be, are they are able to overthrow the system, then they will, they will be better off. I'm sure those young people will be willing to take up arms and help that person. Is over, it you a know. result of um, track record? Is it the result of disappointment? Over uh, field promises, I, I, I or think. I think. Generally, I, I think. A I think. Wind of change that is naturally. I, I think growing. it's a. I think it's a combination of both. It's a combination of both because you know when we ran the youth employment pro, pro, I mean a, a program under President uh, uh, Prof Atamils and then President John Dramani Mahama. Okay, it was effectively run, and it was run on a non-partisan basis. Nobody was being excluded from the youth employment programs because of their partisan, I mean, a, a party affiliation. Okay, but currently what is happening is that young people are being excluded from youth employment. They are being excluded from NAPCO. They are being include, excluded even from the Zoom Lion, you know, I mean, a, a programs no, at the uh, district I, I, level. I, I have my own hesitation. When you say young people are being excluded, okay. it looks a bit uh, weird because the All people right. I see that, okay. as participants are young people. Bas basically, what I'm trying to say is that there is a group of young people who are not getting employed because they are perceived to be NDC. Okay, and that level of discrimination is what is fueling, you know, the anger. Okay, and the yearning for you know John Ramani Mahama to return to and the NDC to return to power. And apart from that, okay, we have a, I mean a whole host of young people who are you know idle, they are unemployed, okay, and the government is doing nothing about it except of course the NAPCO program that you know has been able to absorb a few young people to work. Okay, so they are hoping that when John Ramani Mahama comes to power, with all the programs that are designed for the youth. They, it, will, it will give them employable skills. It will make them, you know, I mean, a, live a, a life of dignity. And then, uh, you know, it will take them out of poverty. So I, I think that is what is driving, you know, the, the enthusiasm of the youth that you witness, you know, on, on, the, on the way to on Boko, the on the campaign trail, where, yeah. where you, you, I mean, some of them uh, uh, went on the back of uh, motorbikes. Sometimes the motorbikes will belong to their parents, but they will take them and then uh, get a bit of fuel and ride to the campaign rally so, some to support. Some of them actually shot fuel on the road. Yes. And you see them parked 
and then maybe struggling to find their way out to that has have, that I have, I have encountered that several times and it is because as I said at the beginning okay there is a certain hope that they are and an aspiration that they have now and that is why I'm saying that our youth uh, you know our programs that are targeted at the youth must succeed at all costs and I believe His Excellency to be able to deliver. I, I worked with him for four years as his Deputy Attorney General. When he says something, he does it. Now, the former president has been referring to the free uh, TVET, uh, free training under TVET. That, that He's is been it. speaking to issues about small scale mining. And I know in this area, Talency, for example, right. there's small scale mining ongoing. Yeah. And a lot of people you speak to express disappointment in how uh, the attempt to fight illegal miners has been poorly managed yes. and laced with discrimination and then he talks about uh, free apprenticeship programs that will end up with some uh, resources given to uh, the young pass people out yes. to move on and so on yes are the people really uh, aware of what is in there well or th those, are, those are just following no no, no 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 those are the issues that we the mps you know have been happening on on the campaign trail so the youth the youth know they know that our, I mean, uh, uh, free national, uh, you know, I mean, uh, vocational and technical training programs will come, on, I mean, on stream when, uh, you know, uh, His Excellency takes, um, uh, you know, December takes 7th. office on uh, January 7th. So it is because, and they know that when the NDC says that it is going to do something, it is not deceiving people like uh, has been the case with uh, one village, one dam, one constituency, one million, one district, one factory, and then all of a sudden, we, we, we've come to the end of the four years and nothing, there's nothing to show for all those promises. So in the next few minutes, um, not too long from now, this program will come to an end. Uh, it's obviously a one-hour program. You can join us by sending us your text, 020-866-7000, WhatsApp only. I'll be able to receive, a, I've already received a number of them. I want a few more to come in and I'll read as many as we can uh, for you uh, to also have your say. And so um, I want to just begin to wrap up uh, this show uh, with a brief comment on the economy. In fact, the former president has uh, spoken about his track record. Nana Kufado is also speaking. He says that the MPP are better managers of the economy. This is coming at a time when just recently the Bank of Ghana, I'm talking about the central bank, has released data suggesting that Ghana's debt stock has ballooned to a little over 273.8 billion cities. This uh, may appear shocking, but government obviously says it is doing what Ghanaians expect. And Nana Kufuado has been consistent that Ghanaians must believe in what he has done and give him another term, four more years, to do more. How do you <laughs> respond to this, Doc? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing that uh, after four years of uh, being in office, this is where the Nana Akufado uh, Baumia government you know, has taken us. Uh, Eric, you remember that uh, when they were in opposition and they were campaigning to, to, to win power, they said things as ridiculous as if borrowing, if borrowing is the only uh, way by which you govern a country, their 18 year olds you know, could govern the country. And uh, Baumia you know, made it uh, abundantly clear to Ghanaians that they were not going, they were moving the economy from borrowing you know, uh, to, uh, uh, I mean, a, a situation where we will have, you know, sus sustainable, I mean, a sustainable, uh, you know, I mean, a development without borrowing. You're speaking about Ghana, you know, beyond Ghana eight beyond and so eight and so on. But the process All right? is ongoing. I've yeah, seen well, some initiatives look, by the senior minister. Well, you look, I mean, you can say, you are, I mean, uh, looking at the situation of Ghana beyond eight, and then you take us to a, a dead distress, you know, I mean, level. A, a level, okay, where we are most likely to fall on the multilateral donors again, you know, for assistance. That is a negation of the mantra of, uh, you know, Ghana beyond aid. So for me, they have done abysmally, you know, I mean, uh, uh, they, I mean, they have done worse than uh, any government in the history of this country in terms of their, I mean, uh, levels of borrowing and the fact that we have seen no level, I mean, uh, infrastructure development with what they have borrowed. As the former president said at a rally in Bulga East, okay, you cannot point to any concrete development, such as the Asafo, you know, interchange, 
or the KJTM market or the numerous uh, regional hospitals such as the Bulga Regional, the Upper East Regional Hospital and the district hospitals that he built with the mega amount of money that in relative terms, the amount of money that he borrowed as compared to what they have borrowed. Dr. Dominic Ayenini, uh, stay on. Uh, I'm going to read a few text messages. We are wrapping up. I know you are uh, on the run. You are already in your <laughs> campaign gear. Are yes. we investing in your constituency today? No, no, no. We are, you are visiting. Sorry, Adongo's, uh, Adongo's constituency. So I'm, I'm going to give him more support. Where, where, are, we go where are we going today? Bolga Central and then Bongo. So we are going to be yeah, within, yeah, within the central. But after Bongo, uh, His Excellency will be headed, I mean, out west. Uh, Navrongo, China Paga, and so on. Let me read a few text messages. Stay on, uh, because some of them may be questions that you may want to respond to. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Host. Uh, NDC should be very vigilant uh, about this year's elections because the MPP has started uh, stealing, the, uh, stealing the vote already by printing original uh, papers, but it will not work. Well, this, I assume, should be a rumor, but the party has said it is going to address it. This one is from uh, Donatus from Lashi B. This uh, text message says, please listen to, sorry, um, you have sent several of them. I'll read the last one. It says, um, uh, the last straw, I have been hesitant in writing this short open note to the president, uh, but the recent Charles conference at Cape Coast was the last straw that broke the camel's back and compelled me to break my silence. To begin with, I was a member of the heads of our assisted secondary schools and uh, talks and, and oh, talks okay. and talks. It's a, yeah. it's a long, very long one. Uh, I've long read one. it. I've read it. Um, I, I may not be able to read all. Uh, unfortunately, we read very short text messages. Uh, this one says, "Good morning, Mr. Eric. This year's elections will be uh, an exception." We are simply voting to do away with corruption, nepotism, and security. Vote number two, vote uh, John Mahama. That's uh, hashtags. I'm Al Albert watching you live inside uh, Kumasi. This one says, good morning, Eric. The way things are going, EC wants to rig the election for NPP. I assume it's an allegation because EC keeps giving us assurances. <laughs> Jin Mensah knows that uh, the mother, uh, uh, mother, sister's husband, or it goes on and on. But uh, the summary of it is mm -hmm. that uh, the NDC should be alert, and he says, My name is Masti Alex Alexander. Uh, that's the name. He didn't tell us where the text message is coming from. Hi, Wazor TV. Uh, that's just a text message that dropped. This one says, Good morning. Please, uh, this, Dix this Dixon from Accra, GM all the way. Please, I want uh, to ask whether the NDC has any plan of paying contractors when they come to power. <laughs> You're not a finance person, but if you can uh, uh, respond briefly while, or what you know the, the flag bearer, uh, the candidate has been speaking to while I go through several other text messages, sir. Okay, uh, on, the, on the issue of uh, the payment of contractors, you know, um, when contractors provide services or they provide, you know, um, goods, okay, to the state, that is a debt due and owing from the Republic. Uh, no decent president or minister of finance, you know, um, if that person, I mean, if, if, there, if there are resources to be made available to pay the contractors should default on those debts. Because at the end of the day, uh, the persons who are owed are entitled to sue for their, I mean, uh, their, their, their monies. I believe that His Excellency has committed himself and uh, he did it when he was in power. Uh, we, we, I mean, barely defaulted on the payments of Ghana's debt, especially to local contractors. And that is why there was money in the system. Because, for instance, if you pay the Get Fund contractors who build the little I mean, uh, schools here and there, okay, they employ I mean, uh, young people in, the, in, the, in, the pla in all the places that they work. Okay, they buy you know, cement, they buy iron rods, and therefore money seeps into the system. Um, so it's certainly something that His Excellency will commit. Okay. I mean, uh, so this one it. says OP OPK from Gorso. Uh, super incompetent and clueless Mahama should know that in <laughs> Ghana there is nowhere that a chief has been instilled or instilled again after messing up things and the visionary and competent Anakufado has fixed the mess uh, Mahama and the NDC created for eight years so four more years for Nana for him to do more. Regards to Honorable Martin J. Mensa Kosa, incoming MPP MP for <laughs> Tichuman <laughs> South and vote NPP all the way parliamentary uh, candidates. It's good that uh, we are receiving a lot of text messages. This one says, Victory awaits JDM and Professor J. Nano Pukwajiman come December 7. Inshallah from Abdul Mushin in uh, Tamale. Uh, understand the former president will be coming there and in one of these days. So send us uh, more uh, text messages. I'll be taking uh, what you want Ghanaians to hear from you 
uh, as you speak on this platform on behalf of the NDC. We'll be taking a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll wrap up. See, guys, the team will do all. So give me four more. Mo could do more. Please be what they pour me. Four more for what? Master answer the guy. Four more for what? Four more to do more for you. Four more to steal more excavators and our money. Bisabio. Or four more to kill Ghanaian businesses. No. no. Ah. Four more for family and friends. Four more for neglected projects. Four more for soccer and broken promises. Open up and now four more to borrow more with nothing to show. No way. Hello? Four more for lawlessness, intolerance, and harassment of the media and the political opponent. I beg you. You make a cry self. What happened to the murders of Ahmed Swali? What about the members of the Delta Force where they attacked the court for Kumasi? Where them also brutalized innocent citizens for hours who has woven. Even you the one that four more. Four more for more corruption scandals like the PDS, Australian Visa Fraud Scandal, Kanafse Fraud Scandal, then PPE, don't call me contract for sale by the incompetent clearing agents. Four more to steal more. No! Vote John Mahama and NDC for jobs and prosperity for all. Say. Grandma, he said this medication too is not covered under the NHISO. Oh, are they destroying the national health insurance too? Mm. No worries, Grandma. In the NDC's People's Manifesto, mm. John Mahama says if he wins, he will provide free primary health care mm. for all. Mm, that's interesting. Tell me more. Oh, yes. Under this policy, any Ghanaian who visits the district hospital, mm -hmm. clinic, yeah. polyclinic, or the CHIPS compound with malaria, hypertension, diabetes, fibroid, and so on, will be treated for free, whether or not they have an NHIS card. Really? Oh, yes, Grandma. All you need to enjoy free health care is the possession of any national ID card that shows that you are Ghanaian. But Baba, will he cancel the national health insurance? No, Grandma, he won't cancel the NHIS. Oh, okay. The free primary health care policy will just complement the NHIS. Is that so? Yes, Grandma, there is a big one. In addition, he plans to establish a kidney and cancer disease trust fund to support people with your condition who waste all their life savings on treatment. Oh, wow. May God bless this man. Vote John Mahama and NDC for jobs and prosperity for all. So this is the morning update uh, on TV XYZ. It's powered by Wazor TV. Some of you are following us on Facebook and YouTube, and we are live from Akayet Hotel in Wolgatanga. We are wrapping up this show. I have a few more text messages and I'll um, end with a brief message uh, to uh, the NDC supporters uh, from Dr. Dominic Ayene, MP for uh, Bulga East. Uh, these uh, few text messages here, this one says, Ghanaians are wise and this time and the MPP can deceive us. GM the best. Uh, I will do assembly from uh, Bogoso. Uh, this text message says, I want to see the seriousness of our Shanti region of NDC as the MPP is doing at the Volta region on the ground. Uh, this is Thomas in Kumasi. So what you are saying is that you want to see NDC do well and increase votes in the Ashanti, Ashanti region, region, just as MPP hopes to make uh, gains in the Volta region after the former after the president's visit to uh, the part of that part of the country. This is not long talk. Uh, just uh, go into the polling station, look for the number two, and vote for competence uh, and governance. Uh, I stand for GM. It didn't come with a name. This one says, "Good morning, please. I want to make uh, sure. I want to make you." I want to make sure uh, it's not clear, but let me try mm. to summarize. It says, I want to make you that this MPP government are planning to win with an opaque election instead of transparency. So yeah. I think it's implied. So sorry for the grammar, but I'm just reading as they come in. This one says, please highlight the fact that you supplied schools and science equipment after teachers were taken through iTech training for one month in January 2016. I am Stephen Akolberry from Akolbiri. Akolbiri. What, what, Akol, does it mean? Akolbiri. what does it mean? Uh, is that a small Akolgo. <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you the meaning of the name, <coughs> I think you will enjoy it. Okay. But I will reserve that. Right. I'm Stephen Akolbiri. Uh, greet my able, honorable for me. I mean Kumasi. So somebody is commending you all the way from Kumasi. Yeah. Please ask this uh, man uh, that the NDC party, uh, what are they doing for Ghana? 
we Ghanaians, we just want MPP to do more for uh, Ghana. I am Daniel from Accra. Four more for Nana. Hi, good morning. My name is Hadim Mahama, all the way. My lovely grandma likes NDC a lot. My grandma, I love you. Uh, this is from Koshi. I tried to read about three more. I'm being a signal that time is up. This one says, Good morning, Mr. Eric. GM will win the election. Let's work hard to achieve it. GM all the way. I'm from Tema. No name attached. This one says, Hi, good morning. Uh, this is Najat. I think that the NDC will win the election uh, this year. Uh, four more. GM, uh, four more to uh, read. GM is coming back uh, one way one way from who? Uh, this one says, Good morning, uh, Ahianyu. Uh, the NPP are doing what they can to win the election, but Mahama Fa, NDC, we should uh, be very uh, vigilant. And the last one I want to read here is from uh, Sami. Uh, sorry, this one is a statement they have signed me. Uh, to, mm -hmm. I think it's about the NDC's decision not to respond to the press conference by the, the NDP. The, the NDP. Um, Doc, um, we have just one minute to wrap up. Yes. Uh, what short message can you share to people in the Okay, so, so, so two things. Uh, John Mahama um has been tried and tested mm -hmm. um you remember that he looked Ghanaians in the eye in uh, 2015 and said i will fix doom so and he did it he is coming back to do more for this nation uh, secondly i want to advise the youth especially in the upper east region with respect to the use of motorbikes during this campaign period uh, sometimes they ride in a very reckless manner I, I don't think that uh, it, I mean, people should injure themselves. That's the over excitement. Yeah, over excitement <laughs> in the name of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, campaign politics. I do not think that anybody should die so that John Mahama becomes president or I become an MP. I, so I want to uh, advise all my young people, yeah, my children, you know, my junior brothers, that they should take their time, uh, come to the campaign, conduct yourself very well and be alive and kicking on election day to come and vote for His Excellency John Dramani Mahama to become the, 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 the next president of the Republic of Ghana for the second time in order that he can continue with the good works that he started uh, between 2018 and 2016. Today um, we are going to uh, follow the former president to uh, Bo uh, Borga Central. Yeah. Isaac Adongo is almost a household name yeah. because of uh, what he has been doing uh, to economics and financial issues in this country. And so um, we are going to wrap up now. Um, uh, what I try to do when we go to the regions is that when the advice seems to be targeting ordinary people, yeah. I ask them to say it in the local <laughs> dialect. Some of okay. them stay as long as midnight. <laughs> Some of them, obviously, we see on the screens driving around yeah. over excitement and they may injure themselves. I want you to say it in your local oh, dialect. Oh, okay. So, my dear, my dear, my dear, my dear, my dear, my Ge salat mabo da tin yele tia bang de la kama yani bara moto do mala kina campaign ya ham bara ya bara songa nkabot nenera talu pour la menga ko nera talu ki ko sam pour la menga te vote in dar to kan wana ko kan vote mbo John Dramani Mahama ho me kan bo vote mbo akurutenga so mambo ti za wabe ya han kina na ya bara moto la songa songa gigeti de dare hampa ti yena le popelo le te vote mbo te sola mpo ya za wabe zozo Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so that's what somebody said. <laughs> but for the people in the Upper East region, it's uh, been a direct message and you've heard it. My name is Erika Hianyo. My guest was Dr. Dominic Ayene. I want to end by introducing you to X Natural Mineral Water. This is very sexy. Imagine you are going to sponsor a birthday party, a gathering, <coughs> or any special event. Corporate. Just go for there and i can assure you that it's uh, really natural so we are grateful to x natural mineral water for sponsoring us we end with some live videos of how people received john mahama on day two no the second day that was yesterday of his tour of upper east region <laughs>
bro. You know, see, me as a day, me now they do my houses one and two, they get money, they take settle my school fees. But right now, Joe Mahama say, Chemupe, which means the NDC Bahama led government will pay 50% of school fees for all tertiary students in the universities, polytechnics, college of education, nursing training schools, and so on. Charlie, hey, John Mahama be visionary. Jempe go is pressure for parents and students in the matter of pound. The moment they freak me be the increase of the student loan to meet the needs of the students. And it will be paid on time. You know, see, after John Mahama increased the student loan mm -hmm. 2600 in 2016, mm -hmm. oh, no ad cap press since 2017. Oh, yeah. I be here say, John Mama say he go cancel the guarantor requirement. So say students go access the loan without the need for a guarantor. Oh, as for that move there, time Mama ah. post one. <laughs> and what they finish maybe say, John Mama say he go bring back the student loan plus scheme. Ah. Yeah. This scheme go allow students we get admission to tertiary schools. Fee apply for loan even before them go school. Charlie, John Mama do all this trip. I go be free from hustling to pay my school fees. I go have time to study Buddha and top my class. <laughs> Any challenger? No <laughs> challenger. My guy, Champe. Vote John Mahama and NDC for jobs and prosperity for all.